Good afternoon, traders. Welcome to this week's Elliott Wave Forex and Cryptocurrency Market Analysis Webinar. I hope you all had a wonderful week. Uh, it's been a green week. Uh, so many trade setups playing out. We made so much money this week. We will go through the trade uh, recaps just to show you what we did in just this week alone and uh, how we traded the market uh, and uh, using the Elliott Wave theory. Right, uh, I'm going to switch on to share my screen here so we can uh, have a look at my screen. Let's have a look at the screen here. So if you're looking to contact us, our next course is starting on the 3rd of August. That is tomorrow. So tomorrow is the start of our course. Uh, the next course after, tomorrow, after the one that starts tomorrow will only be uh, in October. Right, so our next course will only be in October. If you're not able to attend this one right now, uh, that starts tomorrow, you'll only be able to attend the next course in October. So the course is 10 days. It runs from uh, 800, 800 GMT, Mondays to Fridays. Uh, we run for about two to three hours daily and for the whole 10 days, right? So after the 10 days, you stay in the group with uh, access to all our premium uh, um, benefits uh, on, uh, on our website for a period of one year. That is what you get with the course. And the reason for that is uh, you'll see as you do trade setups. I don't expect you to learn the Elliott Wave theory in just 10 days. And uh, so that's why after the course, you will stay on, you will see, uh, you'll be able to learn practically how we trade the market. We've got live trading room sessions daily during the start of the London Open. That is at 8 a.m. GMT. We have a live trading session, live trading room where all traders come in and uh, we look at the market live. If there are trades that are probable, high probable, we take them during those uh, sessions. Right, so that is what we do. So for more details, you can check out our website. The website is on there, as you can see, elliotwaveprinciple.com. Uh, check out how you can uh, uh, benefit from that. Right, so we're gonna start today's webinar with uh, trade recaps. Let's start with trade recaps. Uh, I'm gonna open up my Slack here. Before we start with last week's trade setups, I'm just gonna run uh, round up the gold trade. That was a trade of the week uh, for the last uh, the, the last three last two weeks rather. So and that, and and how that has played out. So this was gold. This was our entry on gold. Let me just get my annotation tool here. So gold was a really good trade from right here at 1772. Our target on gold was uh, 1900. Okay, we're looking for 1900 on gold. So this is where we entered pin pointed entry on gold. As we all know by now, gold has now hit almost 2000 at 1984. That is how far gold has gone. It has gone like this. Now, this does not go in a straight line. At around this area, if you remember, we had a bit of a deeper corrective structure. That is when gold was our trade of the week when we were here. I've posted all that chat. I've posted that chat and we've emailed it to all the members that have subscribed to our website. So if you have subscribed to our website, you would have received this trade when it was here. For our members, they got the trade right here at the bottom. So all the five waves leading up to 1900, we got all those five waves. So those who've subscribed to the website have received this, uh, the remainder of the trade from around that level. So this we do in our live trading room. This is gold. This is how gold has played out eventually. It has gone to 1974. I got out at 1900 because that was my target. 1900 was my target. I was done with gold. Right, so we have been looking at the metals like that for the past two months, actually, not just currently. So silver, if you remember the silver trade, from May the 14th, where we took the trade around 1554. Guess where silver is right now? Our target on silver was simply 19. We were only looking for 19. That was 500 pips from current levels, but 500 pips on silver, that is now eventually played out. If you've been watching our videos, you will know that this is not the only trade setup. So here I'm just indicating where the silver initial trade was, and this is where the uh, initial target was. So if you've been watching our videos, you will know that around this area, we had another trade setup for, uh, another trade setup for silver to push up higher to about 1944. Okay, so we have forecasted this. We have traded that. There's a difference between trading and forecasting. So we forecasted, we have traded, we've made our money out of the metals. And that is how those have played out. 
Uh, I'm just not going to show the detail of uh, uh, the next trade here that we looked at, and that was uh, last week. I think last week we indicated that this one has got a nice continuation pattern to the upside, looking for this one to continue to the upside. Didn't expect it to go this high, so it, it has, and I was already out at uh, around 19, and that is enough money for me. We've made enough money on silver and gold. Now, let's look at last week alone, just last week alone. So you do the pip count, how many pips this was. So this was a US dollar yen entry pinpointed. You'll see this is what our members get, pinpointed entries and stops. Now this is a US dollar yen posted for all our members on our website and on our Slack channel. This is how this one has played out. Look at this, inch perfect entry. And this is how this one has played out right down to target at 104, uh, 104.18. A whole 307 pips on US dollar. Right, next one was pound yen. Now here we were just looking for continuation to the upside and we could see the structure was telling us this was gonna push higher. Now guess what? About another 300 pips crushes the target. You do the you do the math, check how many pips it is. We're only looking at last week alone. This is already 600, 600 pips for the last week alone. Next one was Euro Yen. Euro Yen, this was the target. This is what we were looking for. How is that played out? Still just missing the target there. That is about 140 pips. You will see that this has not hit the stop. This is how we trade. It's got a pinpointed entry. Our target is 125.54, this 124.71, very close to target, just 25 pips away from target. That is a Euro Yen. Chief Yen, this was an interesting one. It was a topic of discussion during our live trading room because when this was playing out, remember this had confirmed. Now, when this has confirmed, there were some members that were concerned that this is actually looking like it's gonna be making a three wave move and that it can actually make a move to the downside. Then we said, when we take a trade, we do not change our view. We don't close trades just because structure has changed. What we just do is to remember why we took the trade in the first place. And we just encourage the members to hold this trade throughout. Look what has happened. This is chief now. Where are we? Another 140 pips. Are you doing the best? Just check how, many, how much we've got in the last week. This is last week. I'm, I'm going to show you all the trades, win or lose, break even or not. I'm going to show you just what we did in the last week alone. This is Chief JPY, CAD JPY, CAD Yen. So CAD Yen, we had two entries. This was the first entry on CAD Yen. We were looking for this one to drop all the way down there. How did uh, CAD Yen play out? We have lost this trade here on CAD Yen. It went into uh, profit. Okay, it went into profit. Just one second. This is CAD Yen, as I said, I am going to show you all the trade setup. So CAD Yen, this is where we were. This is our entry. Drops down here and it goes out of, uh, it, it, it takes us out. Now for the next move, CAD Yen, we're expecting a continuation to the upside. Okay, so this is what we're gonna be looking at on CAD Yen. We'll be updating the structure shortly. So that was that is how CAD Yen has played out. New Zealand CAD, that is a setup that we had on New Zealand CAD. Let's have a look at how this has one has this one has played out. Just one second, guys. My apologies. So New Zealand CAD, this is how New Zealand CAD has played out, has made a move up and came back. Okay, so just pops up here and then comes back down again. Uh, has not really gone anywhere so far. As you can see, we're right back at entry. This is how New Zealand CAD has played out. Right uh, now, this is pound US dollar. Pound US dollar was a very nice one because this was taken on Thursday. During the live webinar on Thursday, uh, 380 peeps, painless, that played out in a single day. This is how pound US dollar has played out almost just uh, missing the target by a measly few pips, but we're still looking for this one to be bullish. This is how pound US dollar has played out. Right, uh, New Zealand US dollar has not gone anywhere, back to entry. So it's still going sideways. We're gonna be updating this one shortly. Audi, Audi yen, this is how Audi yen, this was a setup for Audi yen. We're looking for this one to drop, but it has also pulled back. 
This one has actually hit the stop. This is the only one that has hit the stop so far. This is Audi Yen. Audi Chief. Audi Chief still in play. Audi Chief still in play, in profit, as you can see. So those are all the setups that we had. These are specific trade setups. Okay, these are trade setups. They are forecasts that we had, and I'll be referring to those forecasts on the website as we start with the webinar. All right, so you can do the count of how many pips we made in the week. So a lot of Elliott waivers can see the structures, can identify the structure, but you, the challenge is knowing when you are wrong. And we know when we're wrong because the indicator that we use uh, shows us exactly when the trade is ready, where to enter, and where to exit. Now let's start with the rest of the market. We're gonna start with the US dollar pairs. Let's start with the DXY and what we're expecting on the DXY. Right, so the DXY, let me go to the website here. So just you, you see how we update the charts. We're gonna look at the US dollar pairs. All those pairs are listed on the website on in four time frames. Right, before we start with the Euro US dollar, we'll start with the DXY. Let's look at the DXY four hour. So the DXY on the four hour, we're looking for continuation uh, pattern to the downside here. This was on the 25th of July. This was the latest update. We're looking for this one to bounce around this area, right? So this is around 93. We've already starting to, we're already starting to get a bounce on the DXY here. As you can see, inch perfect on the 100% FIB here. So this is what the DXY is doing. Are we getting the bounce? This bounce is not convincing, right? So the reversal here is not confirmed, right? So let's see, we may get a bit of a deeper corrective structure here. If it is a reversal, the indicator will confirm uh, accordingly. But for now we've got that reversal, but that is just a single impulsive move. We're gonna need to see if we're gonna have a bit of a corrective structure for continuation to the upside as it is upside is not confirmed. We are seeing the inverse of what is happening on the DXY on Euro US dollar. So Euro US dollar, you can see similar to what we have on the DXY, we've got a pulsing move to the downside. Is this the corrective structure? We're gonna get a move to the downside. This is still very bullish and it will be against the trend to sell this. Right, so take your time, do not come and sell Euro US dollar. There is still a lot of strength on the RSI. Just look at the RSI, we are still in strength. So the RSI is still strong there. Okay, so that is a Euro US dollar. Let's wait for this pullback to play out. For all we know, this can just make this pullback and continue to the upside. All right, that is how this one, we're gonna be looking at this one. Look for that pullback. Pound US dollar, I've already shown you, this one has reached target and pulled back. Okay, it has reached target. So we're actually looking for an impulse here on pound US dollar. Uh, next week, you will see the updated structure on this one. If I can just show you quickly what we're looking at here on pound, just on the last leg here. So the last leg, the one alternative here is this one, two, and we're possibly looking for this one to be making a one, two. So that is why we were able to trade this 180 pips from here to around this area, looking for this one to be the internal, the internal structure, the internal three waves here, uh, five waves rather, one, two, three, four, five. So we're looking at this as one, two, three. Is it time for this one to give us a pullback in wave four or is it still gonna push a little bit higher, higher? So we'll be waiting to get that confirmation. This is one, two in the higher degree. So what we will expect is for this one to continue to the upside. So that is the structure that we're gonna be looking at here. So that is why we traded 180 pips from there. It is now pulling back. Is this the pull, the, is the pullback of a red wave four? That's what we're gonna be looking at in the next week. For now, we're not gonna be selling that pullback. The market is still bullish. The, pr uh, the price here is still bullish. We're still going to the upside. We're not gonna rush on to that one. Uh, US dollar chief, right, so US dollar chief, is making a bounce similar to the DXY, has not confirmed that reversal, that's a bounce that can do this, can continue lower. Uh, we'll wait for that confirmation to see if we have a reversal yet on uh, on, on that one. So this one is a US dollar, I'm just gonna show you uh, this. Uh, okay, I'm gonna run through them and I'm gonna show you what they look like on the chart with the detailed uh, labeling on the four or the one hour. This is US dollar chief, we're expecting this one to make a bit of a bounce bit of a bounce. 
is this going to reverse or is it going to make one more down before we make a move to the upside? We'll wait for that confirmation. So don't do anything. You don't pick the bottoms on that. Let's look at the US dollar CAD. Right. That is a US dollar chief. Uh, let's look at the US dollar. US dollar CAD rather. Right, so that is a US dollar CAD. Now, US dollar CAD is correlated to US dollar ZA. There's the move to the upside. There has made a move down here. Yeah, last week we said there are two options here on US to like it. Either this is gonna go all the way and make a wave five there. Wave five, looking at this one as a one, two. Uh, let me just uh, look at that. Looking at this as a one, two, three, four, and a five. Now these four can actually be a four here with a flat correction looking like that and make a five. So the question is whether this is gonna continue from here or it's gonna make a bounce first. So we're waiting for that confirmation whether we get a bounce here. So for now, for next week, we will see a bounce here. We're seeing indications of a bit of a bounce here, whether this goes all the way or not, we'll be watching that for confirmation. That is a US dollar CAD, uh, US dollar, Audi US dollar. Audi US dollar, similar to uh, Euro US dollar, you've seen the divergence here on the RSI for a pullback. Is this the reversal or is this now just going to be another one uh, another pullback to the downside for continuation to the upside. We'll be waiting for that confirmation. Let's have a look at the structure here on uh, US, Audi US dollar. So Audi US dollar, look out for this structure. There's a possibility for an expanding flat, which would be a continuation pattern here to the upside. It could be an expanding flat, could be a running flat. Either one can play out on Audi. We'll wait for confirmation on that one. Audi uh, New Zealand US dollar. New Zealand US dollar also making a sideways structure. This is a sideways structure and the structure here is one, two. We're looking for downside here. This is on a continuation pattern to the upside, not a reversal. This is a continuation pattern to the upside. Look at this one here. You've got a three wave structure here. You've got one, you've got two, you've got three. That is a clear ABC structure here. Looking for this one. Is it gonna bounce here and continue to the upside? Do not try to pick the uh, top there for sell. Uh, US dollar ZAR, as I said, the structure on US dollar ZAR is similar to US dollar CAD. We've made a bounce here, we've come down correctively. We're looking for this one to reach that level, makes a regular flat. Unfortunately for US dollar ZAR, we'll expect it to continue lower. This may invalidate this level and just continue higher. Looking at how US dollar ZAR has played out, so we'll be looking, this can actually invalidate the structure. Let me just show you pound US, pound ZAR. So let me just show you pound za here. And just to show you why I'm expecting that this may invalidate. Pound za. Right, so that is pound za. Can you see pound za? We don't usually, uh, we don't usually analyze this one on Sunday on this webinars, but if you look at this one, this has already invalidated a similar, a similar structure that we are expecting on US dollar ZAR. So US dollar ZAR may, or rather the ZAR may be weak against the pound as well as the US dollar. So that structure that we're looking for in correlation, looking at correlation may not happen on US dollar ZAR. Let's have a look there. Go back to US dollar ZAR. So that structure on US dollars, are, US dollars are may go all the way here. We will wait for confirmation to see if this is gonna be invalidated from there. But from current levels, if you get entries to get to this level, you can actually take US dollars are around that area. Right, uh, that is a US dollars are. Let's look at the yen pairs now. Pound yen, you've seen pound yen. This was uh, our trade. We had one, we had this one as our trade setup. So you've seen 300, Keeps on this one. So this one may, be, may have a similar structure. There are a number of alternatives on this, but what we are seeing here, this is just one of the alternatives. We could have this one as one, two here, an internal one 
two. We could have a nest here. Now, looking at this nest, starts with one, two here, a diagonal, and we're looking for a wave three. And if this is a wave three, that means there's still going to be quite a big move to the upside on this one. Why are we looking at that one? It's a wave one, two, three. Uh, this is actually three degrees on this. Let me just show you here. So there will be three degrees here. Let's show the green one here as well. So after the yellow, you would have one, two. Then you're going to have the red here. It's one. The whole diagonal is a one, two. Now we'll be looking for these to be a wave three in the red degree. So we're looking for this one to be a wave three. Two here. Is this the wave three? Are we looking for upside here? Are we looking for upside here on wave three? So what you're looking to trade on pound yen is the move to the upside. Any pullback here, you'll be looking for this one to make that wave three. So if that is a wave three, four, we should have three, four, and five, and then we should have four and five in green as well. Four and five in green, that's one, two, three, four, and five in green. And we still have the yellow. We've started with a yellow degree, so we must still have the yellow degree, one, two. So at the end of the green will be the end of the yellow wave three and we get a bigger corrective structure so that means this is still bullish okay that is still bullish that is pound yen let's keep an eye on that wait for pullbacks for continuation to the upside structure has changed slightly on that uh us dollar yen Right, so US dollar yen, let's look at US dollar yen now. Now US dollar yen was a very interesting one. We had a trade set up, I showed you 307 pips inch perfect trade here. There was a very beautiful trade entry here on US dollar yen, 307 pips down to target. Now the structure, if you go back a couple of videos, if you go back a couple of videos, uh, maybe two or three weeks, you will see that I have been showing you this structure one two three right i've been showing this structure for the past three weeks one two three one two three one two three then we get this trade here as well so that is a simple double xy structure on us dollar yen the yen pairs have got a very interesting structure now for the next week so we'll be looking for this one to push up higher is it going to give us this impulsive move it's very possible that we get this move so watch out for us dollar yen for the move to the upside you could get a very nice trade worth a couple of hundred pips to the upside right so we need to see this one breaking out of this structure out of this corrective structure this is the corrective structure that you're looking at here so but you're not gonna wait to trade here. We're gonna wait for confirmation around the current levels for entry to the upside. Let's see how that plays out. Very, very interesting structure here on US dollar yen, textbook stuff. Let's see how that plays out. Right, uh, Euro yen, you've seen a trade setup on this one, 140 pips up from around this level. This was a trade setup that we had here. If you remember, we have been looking for Euro yen to have completed this structure a couple of weeks back. So we were wrong about this structure that we were looking at. Now, we didn't trade that because we didn't get a confirmation. We didn't get a trigger. But when we saw the change in structure and we were able to get a trade here, indicator was showing us we're getting a trade here. 140 pips easy, 140 pips. That is a euro yen. So I'm still expecting continuation to the upside. Now this may actually look like this structure. If you look at this here, we could even have a structure like this. Uh, let me just change here. Two ways you can look at this. This is a running flat here. You could be looking at this one as one, two, three, and we're going for a five here. So this is the five that we're looking at. Is the five, has the five ended? We're looking to see if the five has ended. So that way five may retrace back to around the 38% uh, percent of this whole move, okay? So we will be watching for this one, okay? So let's see how this one has played out. Let me just show you what it looks like on the website on this one here. I didn't show you this uh, on the Euro as well as this, uh, how we looked at the Euro before the moves. Pound US dollar before the moves upside and then the pullback. US dollar CAD. We're looking for this one to uh, continue lower. We've come down around this level. We're now bouncing here. Is that the reversal? We'll be watching for that. But let's let's go straight into the yen pass. Let's go straight into the yen pass right now. 
let's look at the yen pace. So this was pound yen here, looking for that. To, this is a trade here. I've shown you the trade here. This is pound yen. This is what members get before time. As you can see, posted to, on the 25th of July. This moves eventually played out uh, towards the end of the week. That is yesterday. Right, so there was a pound yen. Let's have a look at uh, US dollar yen. US dollar yen, the, it was, we we're looking for a bounce yet. So we currently have this bounce. Is this the reversal? That may not be the actual bounce that we're looking for. So, but we've got this as an impulse. It can actually be a way for, but I think I'm thinking this has actually ended. This has actually ended on pound US dollar. We'll be looking for upside there. Let's look for Euro yen. Euro yen one hour, as you can see, this was the setup here. I've shown you this on trade setups as well. Upside is what we got. We went up to about 125.49 uh, here, missed the, the target by about 20 pips. That is Euro. Uh, chief uh, Yen as well. Let's have a look at Chief Yen. Chief Yen, you saw it during trade setups. We're looking for upside there. Now, all we'll be looking for in on the Yen pairs is, the, is pullbacks in the next week. Right. Uh, Audi Yen, let's have a look at the Audi Yen. This was the trade, I've shown you this as well. It has now done this. All right, that is how the pairs have been looking in the week. Uh, CAD Yen, let's look at CAD Yen. You've seen this one during trade setup. Similar structure to US dollar Yen. Right, so we've got that. Last week we were here, we we're looking for this one to go all the way. Didn't go all the way, now we're making this bounce here. We'll be looking for this structure. This is a corrective structure. Look for a bounce to the upside. Look for pullbacks for a move to the upside. Uh, Audi Yen invalidated, look for bounces to the upside. This one will be doing this. We just have to relate the whole structure to the current move. Let's see how this that relates. But as it is, the, structure, the indicator is showing us upside here. Following the rest of the Yen pairs. Similar to New Zealand US dollar, looking for continuation to the upside here. We've got this move here. This can actually make one more down before pushing higher because structurally this will not make sense if it just goes, if it just go, if it, if it just goes up from here. If it just go from here, it will not make structural sense. So we'll be looking for this one to continue lower, looking at this as a corrective structure. Wait for that confirmation. Uh, Audi, the, let's look at the metals. The metals we're looking for continuation to the upside. Pullback and then upside. That is gold now. Silver. Silver, look for this structure. We could have this structure here on silver. A bit of a pullback and one more move to the upside. That will be an A, B, C structure. Internal structure here will be these three waves here. One, two, three, four. So one, two, three here. And the bigger structure will be the yellow one here. Pulsing move down, correction in three. We're looking for this move. We don't trade these short moves to the downside. You may want to trade the last bit of a move to the upside. So the move is still bullish. We're still looking for upside. Platinum has made a three wave pullback. Is it ready to resume a move to the upside? This is a one, two, three wave move. Looking for this one to continue higher from current levels. Right, let's look at brand crude. Brand crude on the four hour, you're looking for ups, you're looking upside, we're looking up on brand crude. We have been looking at this as a diagonal. Has it ended? It does not look like it's gonna drop. And this is still the diagonal that we're looking at. It mostly look like a channel now, but uh, let's see what this looks like now. What are we seeing for the next week? We have pulled back in three waves. Is this the end of the diagonal? Uh, we're pulling back to get this one here. Look for entry here, at least to the top boundary of the diagonal there. We're looking, we'll be looking for uh, oil to continue higher. So oil could have this structure. The diagonal could be complete like this, right? With this S, one, two, three, four, and a five. So that will be the last move here. Uh, let's just see. So this could be a four, rather. Sorry, four, rather. So our diagonal should actually go through the four there. Okay, so that is oil, but we're looking upside here. Indicator showing us upside. 
Pound Chief was our trade of the week last week, has invalidated has invalidated a break through this level. We were looking for this to break through here and give us a move to the upside. But the structure has changed, but we can still see the structure can still break down. But for now, let's leave this one. But the structure that we'll be looking at on pound chief, look at this one as three waves up, three waves back, three waves up. Are we now going to get our trade of the week to start playing out? Okay. Talking about the trade of the week, this is not going to be the trade of the week for next week because it's not going to play out in the short term. So we'll be watching this one. Watch out for a, our trade of the week on our social media platforms. Social media platforms, you can find them on all our videos there, as I've shown. So check out our Facebook page, check out, follow our Twitter profile there. You'll find all these charts that we are uploading uh, here on the social media pages. So check them out there. Right, so this is Pound Chief. We're looking for downside. Wait for that confirmation. Pound Audi, initially we only looked for this one to bounce up to this level. It has broken that level. Is it gonna continue higher? If it continues higher, then it's gonna invalidate this structure. So wait for this pullback and see continuation to the upside. Pound New Zealand. Pound New Zealand, the structure that we were looking at on Pound Audi has already been invalidated by the structure on Pound New Zealand. Pound New Zealand, we were looking for a similar structure and continues into the downside, but that structure has already been invalidated. So that means structure has changed. Now look for these pullbacks. Look for these pullbacks. We'll be looking for trades to the upside there. So that means Pound Audi will also push higher and it is not going to make this structure that we were looking at here. This structure is not going to play out in looking at the correlation between this and New Zealand. Right, you cannot trade the market in isolation. Pound CAD. Pound CAD has made a one, it's made a two, has made a three there. Right, so there's the three-way move. Is this the end of the move or is it going to make an impulsive move? Looks like this could be a diagonal here. A, B, and this is a C. If this is a C, that means that is five waves. This is three waves, so that's five, three, five here. Question is whether this is one, two, three, four, or a five, or this is the end of the five. So we wait to see the structure that's gonna form here to see if we're still gonna have one more move to the upside, or if this structure has completed there in A, B, C, in yellow. Panzer, you've already seen that pound, euro pound. So euro pound on the four hour. We're simply looking for this structure to continue. So we've got that here. We've got one, two, three up here. You're looking for this one to come down around this level. Is it gonna continue lower here and break lower? It will have made this structure. So if it continues lower, that is why we're supporting the pound pairs to continue higher in the short term. So we'll be looking for Euro pound to continue down up to that level. Euro Audi. Continuation to the upside, we're looking for this structure. The structure is still in play. It's playing out as forecasted last week. Is this gonna get to this level and continue lower? For now, we just focused on this move to the upside. It may invalidate the structure similar to what Pound New Zealand has done. Let's see if Euro New Zealand structure is still in play as well. So looking at Euro New Zealand, Euro New Zealand almost invalidating that structure as well. So we've got one, two, three here. Right, so if this starts correcting here, pulling back here, that means we don't have that structure and that means that this is the end of the move here. The move ends here, we're starting a new move to the upside, a new swing to the upside. Let's wait for this pullback. We could be getting a big move to the upside here on Euro New Zealand. Let's look at the crosses. Now the crosses are pulling back. Is this the reversal or just a pullback? We've seen this before. We've seen this before. It does not mean a reversal, right? So let's see. This is a pulsing move to the downside. This will only be a deeper pullback if we see a confirmation here. We've got a pulsing move here. We need to see a pullback and a move to the downside. Audi Chief. Audi Chief, uh, you saw how we Pick this one up from right here at the top last week. Check out last week. We saw this one as a move to a passing move to the upside. Uh, then we've got this one as a move back and then move to the upside here. That is a corrective structure. So that is a one, a, b, 
looking for this one to continue to the downside. So we're still looking for this C to continue lower. Watch out when it gets to this level because we can then start making a move to the upside from there. That is Audi, Chief Audi, New Zealand. Audi, New Zealand, one, two, three. Looking for upside here. We've gone up in three waves. We've corrected deeper. We're looking for another three waves here. Are we gonna get another three waves on Audi, New Zealand? If you look at the lower degree, you've got A, B, C in the lower degree. Looking for another A, B, C. Look for this one to continue higher. This is going to be a WXY structure here. We need to see this break above here to see if this is gonna continue higher. But for this to continue, So guys, uh, let's continue. So we need to see a deeper corrective structure here. One, two, three, that is W, X, Y. If this is gonna make a move to the upside, we need to see a deeper corrective structure, a deeper corrective structure like this, something like this, W, X, Y. And this correction can happen around this level. So let's see, if that happens, then we're looking for this one for the long term. That is out in New Zealand. New Zealand CAD, New Zealand CAD, similar to Audi CAD, we've made a pulsing move to the downside. Is this gonna be a pullback? And we're gonna get a deeper pullback here. So watch out for this here. New Zealand Chief. One, two, three. We're looking for this one to continue lower. Making this ABC structure. We're still looking for this one. We picked this one up here from right at the top last week. You can watch yesterday, last week's video to see how we picked this one to the, from the top here for this move. This move is still in play. We're still continuing lower. CAD, CAD also from right here, we got this move last week. Check out the video. Check out, we'll focus on that move. We are now making this ABC structure. Is this now going to be the bounce on CAT? Is the CAT starting to show strength now? We'll be looking for this one to break out of this corrective structure. That is the corrective structure there. We'll be looking for this. And then upside. All right, so those are all the Forex pairs. Let's look at the S&P 500. Let's look at all the indices. So last week on the indices, I show you a potential structure that could, uh, that could uh, play out. And that structure, I'm gonna show it again quickly. So if you look at this last week, I showed you how this one has made this move, how this one has made this move, how this has made one, two, three, and dropped. So somebody was asking, is that structure still valid uh, that we discussed last week? If you look at this, last time this happened in December 2019, this broke above this level. This has now just, is now just at that level. It can still push a little bit higher before we get the drop. So we need to see that confirmation if that's gonna happen. So let's go right to the current level and see how this is playing out now. As it is now, we've seen indications of a push to the upside, but there is lack of volume here. So that could just do that, similar to what has happened previously. So if you're gonna get an entry for upside here, just be careful. That could be the end of the move. We could be looking for downside there. So the structure, the actual structure that you're looking at here on the S&P 500 is that. That is what we have. So. We're still looking at this as a three wave structure here, even if it's gonna push a little bit higher, we're still expecting the move to the downside. That is the S&P 500. The Dow also showing upside as far as the indicator is concerned. We may see this one make this structure. Uh, B will then be here. Then we'll expect this one to come down. As it is, we're just going sideways now. We're not really going anywhere, but we may see this one retesting the top here, but still the bias is to the downside for the short term, at least back to this level. That is the Dow Jones and uh, the NASDAQ. Is the NASDAQ gonna 
keep pushing higher. We have got this structure here. We thought this was gonna make a pullback and come down here. That is still a possibility. We've got that three waves. This could still be a corrective structure for a move to the downside, but that move will only be corrective. So let's see how this plays out from current levels. This looks a little bit bullish for now. Doesn't look like we're gonna have this drop, but let's watch how the market opens on Monday. We're gonna update this one as we get more data likely to get this. But the stocks in the Nasdaq were showing pretty uh, uh, some some strength in the last week. So let's have a look at this one. This can actually come back down. Um, it's, it's still the Nasdaq. It's, it's still the Nasdaq. Similar structure, just showing this. This uh, this one is just shows this corrective structure a little bit more clear. This candle does not mean anything. They like to do that at the end of the. Of, of the session, especially on Fridays. So that green candle does not mean anything. You may find that as soon as the market opens, we're gonna continue lower there. Can even drop, can even gap down here. Let's see how that plays out. We'll be watching that in the next coming session. UK 100 is playing out as expected. That's the structure that we're expecting on the rest of the indices, this structure here. We've got this flat here and this one making a move to the downside. So UK 100 is making that structure still continuation to the downside. Similar to the DAX, DAX is already playing out that structure, ABC structure. That is the structure that we're looking at on the rest of the indices. Okay, so we'll be looking for this one to come down there. That's still the DAX, just another view here, just another broker. Nikkei, Nikkei as expected last week, we expected it to pull back here. It's coming down around this level. Is this going to reverse? Is this gonna reverse at and make a flat and push higher? Remember the expectation was for this one to be making a way for here. So let's see, we'll be monitoring this at this level. Let me just take this one off here. Let's clear the structure. So that is the expectation. That is how this one is playing out. It's playing, out, it's playing out as expected. That is the Nikkei. And lastly, the Nifty. Looking at the Nifty, the Nifty has reached this level here, but it's still showing, uh, still, it's still bullish. One, two, three, but we, you know, we should now look for a deeper pullback, a deeper pullback on the Nifty. Thank you guys for watching. Have a great week. Don't forget to hit the subscribe and the like bucket button as well as that uh, bell notification so that when we post the video next time you get an alert cheers everybody have a great week bye bye